everyone, and welcome to Vibration, where I empower individuals to speak that distinct truth, passions, and personal message on a global online stage. I'm your host, Michelle McDonald, passionate author, speaker, and entrepreneur. And tonight, we are continuing with the art of storytelling, as well as the power of words, with an author who hails from the islands of the Bahamas. With this, we are touching on something that surrounds not only the Bahamas, but also the Caribbean, which are our beautiful waters. In connection with our theme, tonight's topic is our childhood stories matter, reshaping memories into pivotal moments with special guest, Kendrick Delaney Jr who is the full-time CEO of the New Duff Limited, author of Fairy's Tale, and co-owner of Tin Furl Pop-Up Collective. After returning from Canada and Singapore as an expat, he experimented with Asian cooking techniques and transformed the most iconic Bahamian dessert, guava duff, from a family-style dessert into an individual indulgent dining experience, which is something I can certainly attest to. Between 2018 and 2022, he worked as head of digital architecture for the Cable Bahamas Group while building the new Duff to become one of a select group of Bahamian brands ready for international export. With 27 years of experience, in the fields of enterprise building, food and beverage, process digitization, and tech innovation, Kendra's mission is to help grow the Bahamian economy through new ideas and innovation. He holds a culinary arts degree from the College of the Bahamas, a Bachelor of Science in Entrepreneurship, and a Master of Business Administration from Johnson & Wales University. Kendrick, Welcome to the stage tonight. Hey, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yes, so am I. This is such an interesting topic. And I also love the fact that you are reaching children through what you're doing with this book. So of course, with the many accolades and the ways that many of us in the audience know you from, you have taken a childhood memory, boxed it up, and created it into something that's both connective and inspiring. What was your motivation for this? Um, so the motivation came actually very selfishly when I lived overseas. A lot of people would ask me as a Bahamian about the swimming pig, something that I had not myself seen, um, but um, I had really gotten a lot of questions about it. So it was something that I really decided that, hey, I need to figure out what this magic is about. And when I visited the Bahamas, I came, I saw them, you know, a lot of people say when pigs fly, um, so to see them actually swimming really, you know, changed the game for me. And I had a lot of fond memories about fishing with my uncles, learning to swim myself. All of my uncles are fishermen. So it was a really great opportunity for me to kind of mash up those two things. And I, you know, entrepreneurship is my thing. I al always loved the idea of starting from zero and, and trying to make something uh, pop. And Fairy's Tale was my way to do that when it, when it comes to cap, in cap, capturing the story of the swimming pigs. I love that because that's definitely a tourist attraction. So I'm not surprised that so many uh, international persons just expected you to just be like, okay, I know them. This is exactly where you go. Mm -hmm. Call this guy. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've experienced it myself. They yeah. just kind of expect that to be a thing. Absolutely. And it's really weird because, you know, I mean, this is how it is for any person. You you know, you kind of represent your country in a lot of ways that you might not necessarily know how. But I think uh, especially with the swimming pigs, they are such a so uh, such a creative and romantic idea that they figured this out on their own. And I when I first you know got the question, the first thing I asked myself is, well, how did they figure out how to swim? Mm -hmm. And that's where the story took me. I love that because that is an interesting question. We don't think about it. We're just like, this is fascinating. This is different, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's good that your curiosity kind of took you into that place. Mm -hmm. 
So one thing that really yeah. touched on the comment that those persons made was that, you know, living in the Bahamas and the Caribbean, we're surrounded by water all the time. So people expect two things off the bat. One, you love water. You love the beach. You love to be in it every day. And the second thing is that you are an avid swimmer. Now, the thing is, this is not always true. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those two things don't actually go hand in hand. But fortunately for my family, we, we've we all been um, swimmers, uh, at least on my mom's side. We, you know, growing up with fishermen, it's a little different. You don't have a choice in most of those matters. And um, it's kind of a rite of passage for young boys in, in our family to learn how to swim out on the op open seas. Yeah, definitely. So, so true. So in connection with this, uh, I was actually able to relate in a sense. So there was a time when uh, a few years back, a friend and I, we saw some swimming lessons were being offered. I remembered my childhood experience. She as well. And we were like, you know what? we're going to get back into swimming. We're going to learn this thing because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's expected of us. We yeah. always also think about, you know, should something happen? Can you swim? This is always the question. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just so interesting because in sharing my story, I actually connected with a friend of mine in another part of the Caribbean, and she too was learning swimming at the same time. So here oh, we wow. are, adults, getting back into swimming or learning for the first time. Mm -hmm. But our childhood memories of that experience were different, right. but it led us back to this place. Mm. Uh, and it was so interesting because for some of us, it kind of took away the opportunity to enjoy swimming firsthand, to just mm -hmm. kind of see it as something fun, something right. engaging. I can kind of observe the marine life. Mm -hmm. Is this something that you can relate to or maybe something that you're familiar with as well? Yeah, I think um, for me, learning to swim was, wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a fear wrapped around that uh, in any kind of way, nor was it um, like, um, you know, like I think that some people, some Bahamians especially, you know, you know, you don't grow up with access to that aunt or that uncle who is like passionate about the water or, you know, your parents. So you kind of adopt some of their preferences around uh, ocean life, but being surrounded by water, um, I think there are quite a bit of Bahamians who do have this fondness for the water. You know, I've certainly been afraid, I would say, of what could be in the ocean. So. Yeah. But, um, you know, what I love about Fairy's Tale too is that, um, this story actually is wrapped around a, a kind of what I thought when I was younger, a negative experience, right? I actually hated catching fish, like the wiggly fish. That was my biggest like um, uh, fear, I guess, is like, you know, I love the whole idea of reeling them in and wrapping them up. But once it came out of the water, I would hand it to somebody else. And I think especially in, a, you know, these machismo societies, you need to be able to grab the fish and all that stuff. So that kind of created a lot of, you know, what I would call like negative memories sometimes when, you know, my cousins or my uncles would poke fun of me for doing that. But I wanted to, you know, as you get older, you want to look back at your life and figure out how these things really happened. Uh, and a lot of times it was just faced with an obstacle you know, how do you overcome it? Do you look at the lesson or do you look at it as traumatic or something like that? And I wanted to kind of tell this story um, in this way about the swimming pigs, because I felt like I could turn that experience into a positive. And in fact, Fairy's Tale is a great book for anybody looking to learn how to swim, because I um, really wanted to turn that experience of fishing uh, on the oceans into something that you know, maybe these pigs do teach you how to spin, swim magically or something like that. Yeah, and that's really cool. Uh, I love that you provided that source of inspiration and hope for kids because, you know, they're so impressionable. So mm -hmm. if they kind of see someone who just kind of touches the water and they run away screaming, they automatically just think, okay, not the water for me. I don't like it. So right. I really like how you turned it around in this book and then use your own fishing experience to kind of almost bring that full circle so that they know like it's okay i can find myself and enjoy myself in the water absolutely 
another aspect that I really appreciate is you allowing kids to know that they have the power to change how they view their experience. So just from you alone doing this particular thing, they know that going forward from this book and any other experiences that they have, that they can make it into something that is positive and builds their character development. Absolutely. And just yeah. to add to that too, um, uh, so the fairy's tale was born on one experience that I can remember really well. And I want to show you how that is connected to what you just said about changing, um, uh, you know, this, to, you can own that experience yourself. Um, I always was the one, like I said, so timid about fish, these fish coming out of the ocean. Uh, they were slimy, you know, sometimes they'd poke you. Not for me. It wasn't for, you know, seven-year-old Kendrick, right? <laughs> and going for three or four years every summer and having to be faced with this, it kind of became something that was really, I just wasn't looking forward to it anymore. And in one particular instance, I um, was marooned on an island, not really, but my uncle put me on a, a key one day and he said, okay, if you don't want to catch fish, you, we'll go catch fish and we'll go. And I think this was his way of uh cre like a practical joke essentially they just went around the key it a key is not bigger than you know a standard size house in the bahamas so they didn't go anywhere far but um whilst they were making that loop around the island um there was actually a fisherman on that island a guy going walking neck step by step with a net and throwing it out and bringing back fish and he found me there all in hysterics and um I pretty much, only thing I could say to him is like, I can't catch fish. That was my, like what I could get out of my mouth. Uh, um, and he's like, oh, well, where's your uncle? I told him they left. You know, I think he's, you know, younger me probably thought they really did, um, but he could obviously see them or whatever it was. Anyways, he gave me a fish on one of his fish. He put it on a branch um, and he said, here, you get to see uncle when he gets back. They get back around literally in like 10 minutes and I'm holding a fish. He's gone, you know, and um, I just remember the moment of joy and like uh, complete like celebration from my all my cousins that I had somehow magically found out how to catch this fish. When in truth, it was, you know, just another fisherman walking by the shallows. Um, and I love that idea of, of taking that experience and understanding that, A, um, I'm not... I don't need to uh, always interpret something as a negative experience. Like, how do I make the best, best out of this? And B, there's always somebody out there to help you. So yeah. in my book, um, Sinker, who is the main character, uh, the pig, she really steps in as that, you know, as a proxy for this guy. I don't know who he is. I remember he had dreadlocks, short pants, you know, a big net on his shoulders. Um, but she steps in and she finds another kid, you know, who's been marooned by his uncle. Uh, for not knowing how to swim uh, rather than how to fish. And, you know, by the time as the uncle gets back, the kid knows how to swim, which, it, you know, for me was my way to celebrate that experience. Yeah, I love that. It's, you know, such a beautiful way of paying it forward. Mm -hmm. So not only were you transformed just from his one act of giving you a fish, but being able to relay that in your story when it comes to swimming, mm -hmm. which is something that a lot more kids are faced with the pressure of doing, uh, no matter where they are in the world, uh, it really shows the significance of that, just one small act. And, and also just believing in yourself when you mm -hmm. feel as though this is a time when I should just be scared. Absolutely, yeah. And the great thing I would also say about that is, you know, I, I, my uncles, they probably were my grand uncles too, like, you know, different members of the family. But I do remember having a lot of um, feelings about that with that guy, with that particular uncle as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, as a, as an older person now, um, I look at him so differently and so with so much love and uh, compassion for who he is as an individual. Um, you know, the, the ability for him to have you know, think about the cost of taking out five kids on the ocean every Saturday, you know, like I can't imagine where all of these things were coming from, fuel, food, um, you know, spending that time when he could have been easily, you know, taking care of himself at a bar or, you know, at a, you know, at a gym, whatever is his vice or uh, fun time, but he spent it with us. And, and I think in retrospect, it's, it, it is exactly as you said, I wanted Fairy's Tale to be a book that celebrates that story 
in a way that a young person reading it now could understand that, hey, not all adversity is bad. Like if you don't know how to swim, that's okay. You know, yeah. like, you will learn. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's almost like just permission to be yourself. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn, learn it in your time, know that it's possible. But also, uh, as you said, your seven-year-old you is like, you know what? Pulling these wiggly fishes is just not for me. And I'm okay with that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? It's a-okay. Absolutely. Yes. And one thing that I really appreciated about your book is you went the extra effort to ensure that not only is your childhood memories a part of it, your family, uh, but also the Bahamas and so many different aspects, even getting a specialized visual artist to make sure that all of these different graphics just popped out of the page. Absolutely. Why was it important for you to make it as real and relatable as possible? Well, the thing is with Fairy's Tale and I think for any of us who want to do something special in the world is that you want to, you always want it to be the, a, the best representation of yourself. Yeah. For me, um, being an entrepreneur, I've always enjoyed thinking through all of the little details that make something an experience, not just a, a, a commercial or retail product. I could have write, wrote this poem in a book and you know publish it in black and white. I could have put it on a blog, but I really wanted to figure out how do I, how do I take a snapshot of this experience, as you just mentioned too, like, how do I make the world see the Bahamas in a way that I see it? You know, the beautiful waters. I think a lot oftentimes about how many islands we have and navigating those, you know, flamingos, sand, uh, seagulls. You know, one of the, one of my favorite things about the book too is um, everything is memorable. It's actually true stories or memorable to me. My uncle's boat used to be called the Susie Q. So you'll see if you look a little closer, the little flag says that. Um, I love the fact that Ferry looks a little bit like me, um, but a lot more like people in my family. You know, we're, we are a culture of black people. I wanted to celebrate that. I didn't want it to be like Caucasian faces that there's nothing wrong with that and they are truly behaving as well, but we are predominantly black and I really wanted to make sure that um, the characters felt like Bahamians. Um, you know, the tattered hats that he wore, um, you'll see that I use uh, a little bit of puns with all of the names. So my uncle is called Harpoon, the, the, the uh, pig is called Sinker, the book is called Fairy's Tale. There's a lot of different plays like that. The, I wanted to make sure that we really tap, I tapped into all the possibilities to, to get people to think and experience the Bahamas from wherever they might be around the world. And I think that that is very, very special. It says a lot about your passion. You know, it was mentioned already in the introduction, how much you want the Bahamas to blossom, how much you want people to appreciate it not only for what it is, but for our, our very own people to understand their value and mm -hmm. be able to express that in a way that remains innovative and, and always relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, another part of it that I really wanted to uh, applaud you for is as you stated, you wanted it to be as representative as possible. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to books, there are so many times that Bahamian kids or black kids around the world can feel as though, you know, I have this favorite book, but I feel like I can't relate to it. I can't right. see myself. And as a child, being able to see yourself means a lot. Like you have mm -hmm. a family, you have friends, but when I have something that I can kind of hold really tight at night and be able to say like, this is me, that means something special. So the fact that you created this book in a way that matches that, mm -hmm. it really says a lot and it provides something very special for a lot of black kids. Absolutely. And I, and just to add on to that, you know, for me, uh, you mentioned this a few seconds ago, but this is probably one of the biggest things that I'm most proud of, which is, um, you know, we are, we have a lot of problems. Bahamas has its issues like anywhere else around the world, you know, um, but at the same time, there's so much beauty in the simplest things in the Bahamas, right? Uh, the food that we eat, um, thinking about Guavada, for example, you know, I, I was never, I can be. I can admit I was never like the evangelist for Guavada, but 
I believe truly I became a chef because I watched the process, like mm. how much love yeah. went in from my grandmother, from my mom, from my uncle, the people who you see peeling them and, you know, all of this, um, what's this word, the ceremony around food in the Bahamas. And, and the same thing is true with Fairy's Tale. It's just celebrating, you know, I don't know if you've ever been on a boat, uh, Michelle, but you got to spray it down afterwards. You got to scrub the deck. You got to you still got to go home and clean the fish. It's a lot of work involved with it. Um, and I wanted to make sure that all of that is captured in a way that is, like you said, innovative. But at the same time, it is it's a celebration. This is all possible in the Bahamas. There's so many different versions of, of a Bahamian experience, but I wanted to make sure that um, persons like myself who came from really nothing, like salt of the earth and um, just find a way to get the rest of the world to see us as ourselves. You know, have you watched Moana, for example? Oh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and I think about that, like how that film has just crossed the world, the globe, and people yeah. sing the songs and they imagine the hula skirts and the story of, you know, treating the earth with respect. Yes. Um, and I thought the same thing could be possibly true for these pigs. Like, how do I give them a bit more, um, what's the word, something more majestic so mm -hmm. that it's not just come and swim with the pigs. It's like th they truly have something special to offer. Yeah. And I think that, as you stated, it gives it just a little bit more magic. Mm -hmm. As you were stating, and, and so also that when when the tourists come and they see these swimming pigs, they have more of a respect for them, right? Absolutely. Because you know, as you're a tourist and you're you're in somewhere that you consider exotic, it's very kind of easy to get lost in just taking photos and just mm -hmm. enjoying the moment. But when you have a special sense of respect um, and almost gratitude for being in this moment and experiencing this. Mm -hmm. It really just transforms it into something different. And so with your book, a lot of persons, children and adults can learn a lot more and, and gather that so that when they come, they get to explore and appreciate the Bahamas, but in a deeper way. Absolutely. That's you, you hit it spot on right there. <laughs> Excellent. So, of course, you've shared so much with us. We understand how a lot of our little ones can benefit from reading your book. We want to know how can we show you support if you have any new projects or books coming up uh, and of course where we can find your book absolutely so yeah my, my intention for fairy tale fairy's tale was to be is to be a series um the initial one you know i i could be honest like i still have problems with spelling and grammar so i'm not i wouldn't say that call myself like the most um prized writer um but i do believe that that's, that's also part of the great part of the story. So what I want to do with Fairy's Tale is each edition of this is really working with other authors who has a similar story, some childhood experience that they want to flip into um, a positive, that hero story, basically, um, and, and help to illustrate some other experiences in the Bahamas. You know, there's Pineapple Fest that I'm, I'm addicted to. I love pineapples. I love pineapple jam. I love everything pineapple. Um, there's salts, salt farms. You know, there's Chick Charney. Um, there's so many things, the Lighthouse in Abaco, that I believe that other people have these stories. What I am best at is the business model and the, the way to take this forward in the most, uh, I guess, international way. Um, and my hope is that maybe through this conversation or through, you know, other conversations I have privately with persons, people would approach me with a story, we can help craft it together. Um, and then we start publishing more of these over and over and over. Fairy's Tale is, is my hope for retirement. That's my hope as an entrepreneur, you must know this as well. You know, you, you don't have the, the luxuries of insurance and retirement accounts. So I'm really hoping to, to find a way to financially support myself, but more so um, be able to contribute to the national economy, in, in particular the tourism product of the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you also mentioned where to find it. Right now it's available several places in the Bahamas. Um, you can also buy it anywhere globally online at, by, at fairystale.com. Um, we have shipping centers in the UK, in the US, and in Singapore. So if you want um, a book, I think it's about $12 for 
for international shipping globally. Um, and right in the Nassau, it's available at the U.S. Departures Airport. It's available at the New Duff on West Bay Street, Logos Bookstore, and a few other small um, tourism resellers across the island. All right, excellent. Yes, I definitely think that a lot of authors are inspired by your story, um, being able to take memories of these places that, hey, we don't know how long they're going to be around for. So mm -hmm. being able to actually capture them in a book uh, is not only just valuable, but it can actually be a uh, once in a lifetime type experience because other persons will come and be like, oh, was there, there was actually a lighthouse. You know, you guys had this particular attraction, you know, it's, it no longer exists, but now it's in this book. Um, and I think yeah. too, there's so many who have had childhood experiences that they've wanted to express in a certain way. And so you have now provided a positive aspect mm -hmm. for them being able to do that. Absolutely. And I, I will add to this, um, which is um, if there's anybody out there listening and they do have a story and you're not sure how to write it, um, I'm happy to work with you. Like Publishing a book from start to finish is not simple. It's not an easy task. And you know this, other persons watching must know this as well, but there is some tenacity needed to get from ide an idea to like a, a real product. And then you still got to sell that as well. Um, and so fortunately, I've gone through that. Um, it took me two years, two and a half years to get to my first physical book. Um, I do have the connections when it comes to illustrators. I do have printers. Uh, and I understand a bit more about that world. You know, how do you get an ISBN number? That's something that I never thought about when I was writing this book, but you have to go through that journey. So I also want to offer, if there's anybody looking or listening, uh, my email is uh, fairiestale at gmail.com. Um, you can just drop me a note and I'm happy to kind of like reach, we can chat on a call and, and give you some tips on how to get from zero to, to published. Awesome. I'm sure that's going to help a lot of authors fulfill their dream because that's always it. You yes. have the script, you have the idea, and it's just kind of this looming thing of what is next? How do I get from A to B? So you, you've helped a lot of persons just now with just providing your email. Absolutely. <laughs> Kendrick, I must say, absolutely adored your transparency tonight, uh, sharing your childhood story, you know, admitting that you're not perfect. A lot of us kind of feel like as kids, there's so much pressure to kind of like everything that your family likes or your friends like, and that you have to be a certain way. And you are just, fully able to state that, you know, this is where I was at. This is what I was dealing with as a child. Um, but I had this experience and I decided to embrace it in a way that helped me through life. Um, and then also too, you had the maturity as a lot of adults eventually go into was seeing your uncle differently mm -hmm. from that experience, appreciating him, admiring him, and almost giving him that elevated sense of respect like you know i i, I appreciate what you did for me and i, I put it here in this book and I, I hope it's something that you can appreciate and i'm sure that he is extremely proud of you for that yes I, and i i have to say one more his name is elgin Cart cartwright we call him uncle ellie um he you know he's still alive um he actually is at the old folks home on east street south um, we go to visit him often, you know, the pandemic was so rough on him. And I remember um, the first photo I took with him with the book, I, I have it on my website um, and how I felt just as you just said, it was just I, this figure in my life that, um, you know, I lost, I lost him for at least 20 years, you know, after I went off to college, I didn't really, you know, he's an older guy. We, we went in our own different ways, but to come back and have this moment with him also felt so, it felt right. And and I I encourage anybody to, you know, those persons, as you know, the older persons in our lives, they have so much to offer, so much wisdom. They need our support. Um, I see him, I see him so differently now. And so this book, I, he's he's obviously is dedicated to him as well. So uh, when you open the cover, if you do pick up a copy, please um, think about those persons in your own life and who you can reach out to and be there for them as they get older. 
I love that. That is such a powerful takeaway uh, for all of us to kind of keep in mind. You know, sometimes we keep our grandparents so close to us and our parents, mm -hmm. and we always feel like they're going to be here. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. As I continue through life, these persons are going to be here. And hopefully for most of us, we have that moment where it's like, I need to continue to bond with them. I need to cherish this just a little bit more, spend just Absolutely. a little bit more time, talk a little bit longer. Uh, and so I thank you for sharing that message with us because a, a lot of us needed to hear that. So thank you. No problem. One other thing that I really, really wanted to mention uh, was a thank you for your book being this beacon of inspiration for a lot of kids. Being able to understand the dynamics of swimming, knowing that there's always someone there, as you stated, to provide support. As kids, you can feel alone at different times, when in reality, there are so many people waiting to help you and show you love. And so through your story, you being able to turn it all around. Mm -hmm. Now there's so many kids who can have a lot more happier ones and be able to embrace the positivity out of all of this. Absolutely. I want to invite the audience to also follow Fairy's Tale on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And as Kendrick said, if you are an author looking to publish your book, you can follow his email address, which he provided earlier. So that you can get started. I want to thank our audience for tuning into tonight's episode that's proudly sponsored by Amber L. And of course, to our guest, Kendrick Delaney Jr., who's doing an incredible job in showcasing the Bahamas and also building up our youth at the same time. If you are just tuning in, I invite you to watch the full episode on both Facebook and YouTube, and of course, to tune in next week for another episode of Vibration, where we raise your frequency and amplify your truth. Bye, everyone. Take care.